Hi, my name's Kevin Chance. I'm a Wren Minion. Get off the bench. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Red Men Show, episode 47. Cheers. <laughs> it's been a while since you've seen us. And the last time that we did a show while drinking vino, we got oh, ourselves man. into a $15,000 pickle. Let's see if we can do that again, three times over. Today's show is about the wager. <laughs> we have with us a friend of ours, a professional poker player, Kevin Chance, welcome hey, to the show. Hey, hey, how's hey, it going? How's it going, everybody? You gotta love that, don't you? you gotta, <laughs> we like it, we like it, we like it. So we were talking about the different lifestyles that people have designed for themselves. And we've spoken about, like, in a perfect world, what would your life look like, Al? What would my life look like? And we have an alternative perspective for you here today. We have a, a man who does who needs not do anything more than wield some cards, some chips, and occasionally click a mouse or two, right? So, so, so far, we, yeah. we thought what we'd do is we'd, we'd, talk to, we'd talk to Kevin about what it's like to be a professional poker player. Sounds good. Okay, so let's, let's go back, Al. Yeah. Okay, you get him started. Like, first off, how did we meet Kev? And when did we meet Kev? Uh, we, as being me, met Kev back in high school. Uh, we used to we used to play some hoops together. Uh, we, being me, occasionally won more than not, but that's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. <laughs> that's for another episode, I guess. <laughs> uh, uh, but we play sports together. Um, we kind of talked <coughs> sparingly through uh, college. We kind of run in the same circles when it came to poker. And then Grant started playing some poker with me, and then we all kind of uh, meshed there. Uh, I was playing online just kind of here and there. Um, I ran ran into you down at the casino one night, and yeah. you said, "Hey, man, uh, you know, you want to play some cards sometime? I haven't seen you in a while. Let's get together." We got together, played some cards, and uh, introduced Grant. Probably two or three months later, after that, to get him back in the, on the sauce. And uh, ever, ever since then, man, we've just kind of been playing online a little bit, been playing been playing live uh, games as well, and uh, that's kind of brings us up to the day. So, uh, sure. How did how did you come about? become a poker player why did you become a poker player when did it start give us all those good details well this uh this will take a minute but um <laughs> i guess i started just me and my friends um in high school you know quarter quarter dollar stuff you know if you lost ten dollars or won ten dollars it was a great day sure. uh, we played it you know we played at lunch we played study halls <laughs> things like that sure. and then uh i heard about online poker after i went to college um and uh Started playing on there, playing strictly no limit. Played nothing but no limit, right. and was having a lot of success. Um, actually, paid my way through college. Um, me and one, me and one of my buddies. Actually, I don't know if I ever told you this or not, but uh, it was uh, the site was called Poker or no Party Poker. Okay. And uh, they had a nightly two hundred dollar tournament, one of their biggest tournaments, you know, of, of the week, and he won it for twenty eight thousand. No, you never told me. Yeah, yeah. he won it one mm -hmm. night for twenty eight thousand. I was sitting right by his side, and uh, he, he shipped it. <laughs> and uh, so that really got, like, oh, sure. uh, the juices flowing. And, you know, I, and I felt like, because I taught him how to play. Right. And basically, we were both sitting there, and he was clicking the mouse, but I was making, <laughs> right. you know, I was the making the decision. Right, yeah. So yeah, You were the puppet master. No, it was right. great, though, because, you. you know, it was under his account, and I had no idea, you know, what would happen. And we had no prearranged anything. And he tr he gave me $4,000. Uh, yeah, sure. so yeah, you can't cool. argue with yeah, it. So yeah. it was great. Yeah. Um, so, you know, um, played for four or five years during college and uh, had a lot of success. Really did, you know. I didn't play that much. I was playing football. I was taking classes, but just in my spare time, I probably made fifteen to twenty thousand dollars a year for four or five years, just screwing off. Right. So uh, after college, I moved to Lexington with one of my buddies. Uh, just kept playing poker, taking a couple online classes, and really just it was living the dream. <laughs> it was because all I did was I took some online classes and I played poker and I golfed. <laughs> and, and you know went to movies and right, things like right. that and i wanted stuff. to do that for the rest of my life but uh then i had a little <laughs> a little cloud of trouble for a for a little bit i lost some money gambling related that uh wasn't poker related and uh had to start from square one so i uh moved to springfield illinois got a real job 
was there for 18 months. Still played poker sparingly, but not a lot. Moved to, got promoted, was a manager of a store in Mansfield, Ohio. Same thing, played poker, but not a lot. And then I started getting back into it more. And it was funny because there was a big poker boom in 2003. Chris Moneymaker, you guys have all heard him, I'm sure. Right, right. And all these people who had never been, had access to the game before started playing. So there was a big poker boom starting then, and the game got a lot tougher. I I played some, but I didn't really win playing No Limit. Um, so I just kind of started playing mixed games. And I don't know how that came about necessarily, but I realized I was having some decent success. So um, I won a decent amount. I quit my job, and I started playing online full-time again. And uh, it was it's funny because I've had two poker careers, and one was in No Limit, and one's been in, entirely in mixed games, and that's uh, – that's where we're at today. And, and mixed games is usually horse or horse. seven game or, or, or nine game or ten game. And that's that's a limit game as far as Hold'em, Omaha, Raz, Stud, and Stud High-Low. Yeah. So, and speaking of Stud High-Low, he is the number one wow. full tilt <laughs> wow. Stud High-Low player when it comes to tournaments on full tilt. Is that correct? That is correct. For the year of 2011. And, and, and 2010, 2010, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and then you started probably halfway through 2009, right? Or you would have been probably. I assume I would have been up there. Yeah, right, yeah. right, sure. Mm -hmm. So, and what I think is really cool about that is if you go and look at that leaderboard, you're beating pros, meaning you're beating sponsored pros from Full Tilt guys that when you show up have a custom avatar, their name in red, and they're on the payroll. They're getting checks from Full Tilt, right? Or free entry or whatever they've negotiated. Right. But, but you are consistently beating. The pros, the full tilt sponsored pros in stud high low, in these multi table tournaments again and again and again. <laughs> yeah. That's killer. I mean, it's yeah. really it's that's something to that's, be said. That's yeah. that's sharp. We know you're a humble guy, but that's you know that's something that you can definitely beat your chest about. You yeah, know? it's you know, uh, it's I'm, it's fun. It's exciting, yeah. and it makes you realize like what the future might hold and why I'm so excited about playing these because I've played for two years, whereas these quote unquote red pros have been playing for. 20 some years there's still a lot i have to learn so right. it can only go up from here i think right well, I, I hope i also i also am of the belief and it, it might not take much to get me off of this theory but <laughs> uh, it, it is my theory that that stud high low is one of the most sophisticated games of poker that there is i think there's a less amount of variance in stud high low when you play it correctly than any other game that i've ever played and that encompasses you know, 10 to 12 different forms of poker. Right. And so when you think about that, when you're talking about variance, you're talking about consistency, and you're talking about predictability, and playing a perfect game of poker, because that is the goal. Oh, right? Yeah. There, right. There's this ethereal goal of you want to play the game perfectly. And in a lot of, in a lot of cases, there's nuance. It could be argued that one play is better than another. Sure. In stud yeah. high-low, I think that that's a much more difficult nuance. The nuances are smaller. Because it's more, it's it's you have the the ability to play a more perfect game of stud high low than I think that you do like no limit hold'em, right. which on occasion is going to pay you off to take a a, a major risk a for all your chips, calculated, a calculated yeah, major risk. Calculated. But but even even so, where you're going to be a significant underdog sure. to what's going on, or you're going to even what's worse to me in in hold'em <laughs> is when you're not a significant underdog, right. when you know that the right play is to go all in with your threes against ace king and you're at 53 47. sure i mean that you know what i mean and it's like and that's the correct play yeah. and the correct play is at this point your entire tournament is now a uh, uh, coin toss sure. i don't want to be involved in that again and again and again and again for high right. stakes i mean that's just a you know even though it's the right play whereas in high low you don't have those kinds of plays where you're playing all your entire stack right. for 50 percent right. and coin flips routinely right sure yeah, and that's what uh, drew me to those those games, stud high low, you know, and uh, and the other games of horse, is, you know, there, you always look for a small edge in hands, just like you do in no limit hold'em. But when you find those that small edge in, in horse, you can punish people over and over and over again. And if you lose one, you're not out of the tournament. Right. So yeah, that's it makes uh, it makes it you just find those small edges, and if you find enough of them, you're going to be a winning player. Let's talk a little bit about the lifestyle let's remove the game okay okay so the, the the games aside we know that we're seeing some success 
when we're talking success, what level of success are we talking about? And what are your goals with regard to success? Because, you know, certain people's lifestyles of need a, a larger income than others. Um, sure. But also there's that I will forgo a million dollars a year for a certain amount of freedom or flexibility, that kind of thing. Sure. And I guess with me focusing on the type of games I focus on, I don't have the ability um, unless I, you know, win one of ten tournaments per year to make hundreds of thousands of dollars. I have to string together a lot of smaller results. Um, I'd be happy um, making $75,000 a year for the rest of my life. I think with what I'm doing right now, it's feasible. And there's always going to be those couple of times where I might win that big tournament and have big years. Sure. Uh, but as as it is right now, I think seventy five thousand um, dollars a year is going to be my realistic goal year on a year to year basis. Mm -hmm. Again and again, that's and, great. And when sure. we talk and we talk about seventy five thousand, I know that this is a personal goal of yours that you have not yet cashed for five figures. I haven't. Yet, yet you're still able to sustain your lifestyle with $75,000 sure. a year. So like, it's not just, hey, one big tournament, I'm playing for one big tournament, and if I win it, and super. Like it's consistent right. winning over and over and so, over and over So over much again. less variance in the type of games that I play than No Limit Hold'em, because you might find a No Limit Hold'em player who's a, a pro who, who will have losing years. Playing the games that I play, I feel like I will not ever have a losing year, and it'll be rare for me to have a losing month, I think. I hope. <laughs> I haven't had many in the past 30, so hopefully that trend continues. Yeah. So you've had a tremendous amount of success in No Limit. Then we go on hiatus. We come back to mixed games. Yes. As a student of the game, I believe there's a new game that's kind of got the it's getting into the end of the skin. Oh, it, it does, got you, man. Got you it's, it's got a hold of me. Right, right, right. <laughs> so what's this game and what's your experience been? How long we've we been playing? Are we successful? You know, I I met a guy out in Las Vegas last summer. Um, his name's Brandon. Uh, his screen name is Her Ghost, and uh, I've watched him online some just because I know him. Yeah. Um, and Swing playing him a little bit. Yeah, playing Deuce to Seven Triple Draw, which I had never played up until six weeks ago. And uh, so he gave me a crash course one night. Um, we were just playing heads up for play money and for maybe 20 minutes. And I just, I, I loved it because I, that's how I got playing mixed games too, was I was tired of playing No Limit. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'd be a winning No Limit player or not because I just don't play it anymore. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, so I started playing some and I started small, two to four, t you know, $2, $4 bets. And I uh, was winning a little bit and just gradually moved up. And I'm playing like 10, 20 now. I'm never going to be playing, no matter how big my bankroll is, 50, 100, anything. I just don't think it's worth it to take that big a risk and have that big a swings, you know, when no matter how much money you have, really. So I'm playing 10, 20, and I've done really well at it in a short amount of time. <laughs> so I'm really looking forward to playing it in a tournament structure um, as opposed to just a cash game structure because I always like tournaments better anyway. And I haven't even tested the waters of that yet. So... I'm I'm really looking forward to it. It should be a lot of fun. Is there one on the schedule? Is there a tournament? There is. There uh, coming up in you know less than two weeks. They have the F Tops, which is a full tilt online poker series championships, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Right. And uh, they'll have a Deuce to Seven event, uh, two three hundred dollar buy in that uh, I'm really looking forward to. It. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. So that kind of segues into into the WSOP baby in this <laughs> summer calendar. We're gonna play the Deuce to Seven. Wow. With the WSOP. I knew it wasn't on his radar. I was excited to be the one to do that. You know, I don't know if I have enough experience to play a $1,500 oh, $1, buying Put event. Put satellite into it, baby. I, you know. Is there leverage? Maybe. We'll see how it goes out there. Yeah. Um, that would probably be on my, you know, third or fourth priority list behind a couple others. But if I'm out there and the timing's right and I'm, if I'm up a little bit, it's a possibility. Yeah. What's, yeah. Uh, what's one and two and three on the on the chance well, priority list? Yeah, last year I played, without success, mind you, the $3,000 buy-in horse, uh, the $1,500 buy-in horse, and the $1,500 buy-in stud high-low. Went over three, but, you know, such a small sample size, it's hard to say. Um, I feel like I'm obviously a favorite in any field. Um of with of those type of games, right. so uh, you know you can't get frustrated by going out there once and losing. Sure, you gotta you gotta try it again. And I I had a small amount of success um, at a smaller casino, a smaller series, uh, five hundred dollar buy-in horse. I actually got 
um, fourth place in for a little bit of my money back. Uh, not all of it, but uh, it gave me uh, some confidence that you can win in Las Vegas. Not everyone loses. <laughs> so, yeah, we're going to try it again. Right. So this, what's the difference between online and live as it relates to the tournament structure, the, the blinds, the, the rate of play, the – the experience of the dealers and the players. I mean, do you find do you find it frustrating? Do you find it preferable? Um, I'd I'd rather play online. Um, you know, uh, in Stud High Low, uh, I'm sure there's tells and things like that, which um, more experienced players can pick up on people that I won't be able to, um, and that I might be giving off. Um, but I feel like it's more about the cards anyway. So the physical tells don't play a huge role. And, and limit games, I I guess, in my opinion. Um, so I'd much rather play online. It's just faster. Um, it's obviously um, a lot more convenient. Um, you, get, so, you can get a game almost any time. Yeah, <clears throat> so I'd rather play online. But it is fun to play live um, because it's it's unique and it's not something you can do every day. So there's pros and cons to both. Mm-hmm. Let's, let's talk about tilt for a minute. Let's talk about... Tilt factor? <laughs> yeah. If you guys don't know what tilt is, that means uh, basically that uh, you've lost a big hand, you've lost a big tournament, whatever it is. However you get to tilt, you're an angry fella right now. And tilting either means you start shoving with bad hands, you either start playing bad, a little mixture of both, you start calling off your chips. You do all these kind of things that you normally wouldn't do if you were, if you had confidence, if you were, quote, in a good mood, if you were winning constantly. Talk about your tilt experience and how you stay off of it, how you get into it, how do you know you're into it. Do you ever, do you ever get tilted? Of course, I, I think uh, I think that uh, anyone who, for the lie. Yeah, no, I think that everyone who plays poker to a certain extent does get uh, frustrated, gets upset. Um, how it is with me personally, I uh, I get mad not when I lose hands um, because you're you're going to lose a lot of hands. I get mad when somebody plays a hand that they shouldn't have either played or they play a hand poorly. Um, against me and beat me and how I go on tilt is after that I I play bad hands and I especially play bad hands against that specific person <laughs> just you know <laughs> you just want to get them back you know you just want to even the right. score so to speak right. so that and I you know I try to control it I don't think I'm too bad there's certainly people who are worse but you can always strive to get better at something like that and it does affect your game and and bottom line, it affects your bankroll when you when you play bad. Right, and it's and it's tough because when you have these bad players playing these bad hands, that's what that's what gets you paid. Right. You know, so like what we're talking about with variance, if you're if you're an, an over if you're not an underdog, if you're a favorite, eighty percent of the time, eighty percent of the time you're going to win that, except when it's a big pot and it's at twenty percent, and then you get beat. Like you know, so that can easily put you on tilt. But if they weren't going to play bad. And there were all good players out there. It'd be a much, it'd be a much harder game either with stud high low or deuce to seven or sure. what, whatever we've talked about today. Sure. So it, it's always it's been a my theory line. that, and we talk about this occasionally, is that when you get knocked out of a tournament, it had better be a bad beat story. <laughs> you know what I mean? And and often it is. It's that you go, you know, I can't believe that the the cards came down in the way that they've fallen. I can't believe that I've been put in this position. I can't believe that the player who beat me played his hand so badly. And yet was rewarded for it, right. knocking me out of the tournament. But if it were the other way around, where you're going, oh, you know, I'm only going to win that one in ten times, and it didn't happen. Right. You know, as opposed to the other way around, where you're going, I'm a nine, you know, I'm a yeah. nine ten favorite here. Yeah. You know, but I got knocked out. And you, how do you handle that emotional roller coaster? Because if you are a good player, the only way that you're going to lose is if the bad player catches up. Sure. Yeah. I mean, nine times out of ten, you're right. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. So, all right, your future goals, are they specific? Are they written? Are mm. we committed to them? Do we think about them daily? No. I actually, um, I'm, I'm not that type, really. Um, I just kind of go with the flow a lot. <laughs> and I could have a lot better uh, bankroll management where, you know, how much money I keep online, as a, you know, and things like that. I, a lot of the pros who are more, you know, have bigger bankrolls, obviously, they say you're not supposed to put more than one-tenth of your bankroll into any tournament, things like that, which I do consistently. <laughs> so let's not kid ourselves. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of things that I could be better at. And 
I'm not necessarily working towards them, but if things change in my life, uh, certainly if I ever start a family, you know, things like that, then I will, I'll have to get better at things like that. But right now it's just so easy to kind of coast and I don't play nearly as much as I should. Um, I should play more, you know, if I want to make more money, but right now it's kind of like, it's easier to do it this way. So I don't have any future goals necessarily, but I think here in the, in the near future, I will need to set something up long term and not just kind of go through life like like this, I guess. And and I do want to give back too. Um, at some point, I'd like to do some charity work or something because you don't really, when you're playing poker, you're taking money from other people. There's no other way to put it. Bottom line. Yeah, I mean the site's winning no matter who wins. The site has a rake. Um, so to win money, other people have to lose. Right. So I feel like I don't want to do that my entire life. I need to do something else. So those things are all to come. I'm not sure what they'll entail yet, but um, it's 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 exciting. It's going to be fun, and uh, it's great right now. And hopefully the trend continues. I like it. Yeah. I like it a lot. That's good stuff. Man. Well, I would say. Uh, if, if we'll certainly be doing our best to get a piece of this man's action over the summer, <laughs> if any of it's for sale, and maybe, uh, that, way we'll, that way we'll have a horse in the race, <laughs> and, right. and we can watch we can watch from the rail and sweat for a bit. So uh, sure. anyway, Kevin Chance, Rin Minions, it, the man's living the dream as far as the freedom, flexibility, and and knowing that that his day to day decisions are his own. Yeah. The yep. the your success is is uh, it rests in your ability in your hands. It's not too much different than being a professional athlete, except that, you know, Sosa can go 0 for 4 and still get a payday. Right. You go 0 for 4 and, you know, we're, we're eating ramen noodles. But that's right. That's right. That's right. That's so right. Thankfully, your skills outweigh that. You're doing well. Things are good. And uh, we'll holler at you soon. Peace. I like it. It's back. What's back? It's back. It's back. What's back? It's back. What's back? Chalk talk. Chalk talk. Chickity Chalk Talk. And it's a big one, Ren Minions. It's a big one. The biggest one we've ever had without a doubt. It's it's like a, a hundred big. <laughs> it's a century big, boys. Woo, gotta love it. So here's the story. We're at 99 houses. You better act quick. 99 on. houses. In fact, we might be at 100 by the time this publishes. You better act quick. But when we get there, we need to celebrate. How do we celebrate? That is the question. Blank. Dot, dot, dot. Fill it in. Celebrate <laughs> good times. Help us out. We need to have some fantastic killer kick-ass ideas. We're looking to you to do that. You. Yes, you. No, not the other Rin Minions that are sitting there picking their noses. The more eccentric, the more crazy... The more whatever. The, the more likely the, that we'll the better. do it. Exactly. That's right. Big ideas. Big out of the box ideas. Boobs. Challenge. 100. Choked up. Choked up. 99 red balloons. Choked up. 99 red balloons. Choked up.